Hello and peace everybody. Welcome back to another yoga practice. My name is Ben and today we'll get started in a downward facing dog. Let's go ahead and bring yourself into your starting position. Let this down dog inform you. Keep a little bend in the knees. Keep your heels a little bit off the ground while still driving heels back in space. Feel the hips lift even higher and your belly press a little bit closer to the thighs. Press through your armpits, lengthen through your side bodies. Feel your body activating. From this downward facing dog, go ahead and reach the left leg up to the sky for three-legged dog. And then step the left foot through with grace. Take your time with that step through. Eventually, to warrior two. So we'll roll the left, or excuse me, the right heel down behind us. And we'll circle open through the arms. Keep your gaze forward over your left hand, strong like a warrior. A warrior looks forward while remaining in the present. Aware of one's surroundings while finding calmness within the storm. The warrior breathes and tries to keep the mind relatively empty so that when something does need to come into the mind, we can focus our awareness and our attention on that one thing without distractions, with focus, with concentration, with clarity. Take one or two more breaths. <laughs> Getting right into the practice today. Look at that. From here, we'll straighten the left leg, half bind the right arm behind the low back, flip the left palm to face up, and open through your left side body, piece by piece into reverse triangle pose. Sit in it for a moment, keep feeling into the stretch and the nice sensation between your left hip all the way up to the left fingertip. And then move into Trikonasana, triangle pose. Engage the thigh muscles. Hips bump backwards in space so that the heart can reach long in space out in front of you. Eventually, you find yourself in your full Trikonasana posture. Very strong in the legs. Either fingertips down or even float your left fingertips if you want to. Take an inhale. Full exhale. One more. Take an inhale. Full exhale. Right hand rotates down to the ground. Bend into your left knee to get it there. And then step the left foot back for downward facing dog. From your downward facing dog, we'll do something that we did in a previous class and we'll work on it even more. Bend into the knees and then ripple forward through upward facing dog with the, with the toes tucked. So keep the legs super straight. Engage the leg muscles as much as you can. Heels drive back in space. Hips pull forward in space. Glutes are squeezing and engaging. Shoulders are rolling back and we're puffing up through the front of the chest as it extends through the shoulders. And then bend the knees to press back into your downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, let's lift the right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. We'll step the right foot all the way through. Take your time with the step through. Those can be challenging in itself. And then find warrior two, roll the left heel down and stand up. Open out through the arms. If you want, you could take this warrior two with the palms flipped open to open the shoulders even more. Keep the gaze forward over your right palm and envision your future reality. Think about what you need to do and to be in order to get there. Not rushing ourselves there just seeing ourselves in it so that we can begin to take the actions needed to step our foot forward into the world, to take a risk and then to follow through on that risk and trust in where that action will lead us. A couple more breaths, warrior two.
and then a slow journey to reverse triangle. So straighten right leg, half bind left arm behind your back. Scoop right palm up to the sky and feel the sensation between your right hip and right finger to breathe into it. into triangle pose. Keep this length in the left side body, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen as much as you can. Grip the mat with the feet, engage with the thighs, then find yourself in your trikonasana. One more inhale, one more exhale. Left palm circles its way back down to the mat, bend into the right knee, and then step the right foot back to downward facing dog. Let's try that transition of bending the knees deeply and then shifting forward into toes tucked, upward facing dog, engage through the legs. Pull the hips forward toward the wrists. Pull the chest through the shoulders. Inhale, look up. Exhale, bend the knees. Use the legs to press yourself back. Downward facing dog. Left leg to the sky, three-legged dog. Step left foot through. Go for a soft landing, stepping to the top of the mat for warrior two. Open the arm. Slowly reverse the triangle. Find strength in your ability to move slowly and mindfully. Take this length forward into triangle pose. Trigonasana. Inhale here. Exhale here. Right hand circles back down to the mat. Bend into left knee and then step back to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, hips to the sky, round and ripple forward into toes tucked, upward facing dog. Engage the legs. Find the mindful back bend. Exhale, bend the knees and press your hips back in space for downward facing dog. Right leg to the sky. Three-legged dog. Step the right foot all the way to the top of the mat. Spin the left heel down. Open the arms into your warrior two pose. Reverse your triangle. And then find your triangle. Taking your time, slowly transitioning to really feel the details and put the pieces together. Look up, take an inhale. Take an exhale. Left hand circles itself down to the ground. Place both palms down and step back to downward facing dog. Bend into both knees, hips to the sky, round and ripple forward, eventually landing yourself in upward facing dog. I'm not cueing these poses with the breath because you can let yourself take multiple breaths to go from space to space. And then bend the knees and press back to downward facing dog. Amazing job. Lift the left leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Step left foot all the way through to the top of the mat. 
Drop the right heel down and rise open to warrior two. One more breath, you've got this. Inhale, reverse the triangle. Exhale, open into triangle pose. Take an inhale, fill up all the way. Exhale out. Circle both palms to the ground. Step back into downward facing dog with mindfulness. Bend into the knees to prepare. And then ripple the hips forward into upward facing dog with the toes tucked. Bend into knees, press back into downward Facing dog. Right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Step the right foot all the way through to the top of your space. Spin the left heel down, rise up into your standing position, warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Triangle pose. Take a journey to find the triangle. And then pay attention to the details once you arrive. Scan the body and try to be in it. Big breath in, full breath out. Left hand down to the mat. Step back into downward facing dog. Shift the hips, rounding and rippling, using the strength of the legs to come into upward facing dog with the toes remaining tucked. And then press back to downward facing dog. Make sure your legs are completely straight in that tuck-toed up dog. Let's do three rounds of it here. Inhale to toes tucked upward facing dogs. Legs all the way straight as the heels drive back. Exhale, bend the knees, press back. Downward facing dog. Two more. Inhale, ripple into toes tucked upward facing dog. Exhale, press back into downward facing dog. We have our last one. Inhale, ripple to toes tucked upward facing dog. Exhale, press to downward facing dog. Inhale to lift right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Exhale, step the right leg through for half pigeon so the shin will actually step through. Stay upright once you get to this pigeon pose. Try to have your right knee a little bit wider than your right hip, so the right knee isn't extending straight forward. The right knee is kind of extending out at a bit of an angle, and that'll kind of help you find the external rotation, the wrapping of the right leg. Stay on your fingertips, keep lifting through the chest. I know it's quite active in order to do so. So let it be active. Let it be something that requires your attention and your awareness. And then crawl forward if and when you're ready to do so. A few breaths here.
Begin to sit back up, palms to the ground, tuck the toes under behind you, and then step back to downward facing dog. In between sides, go ahead and go through your transition, rippling forward to toes tucked, upward facing dog. Let this keep the energy in the legs and keep the spine feeling alive. Press back to downward facing dog. Lift the left leg up to the sky, three-legged dog, stepping the left shin forward into half pigeon. Stay long. Stay upright, stay on the fingertips. You can always use two blocks under your fingertips or a block under your hips if you currently have them with you. Tall and proud. Letting the lungs expand forward. Eventually finding your forward fold. Folding forward, not folding down. So try to fold long, using that length that you created a moment ago. Lift up into your upright pigeon. Place the hands on the ground and find down dog, tucking the back toes under and stepping back into it. A last little moment of activity for this practice. Let's try something. Shorten your down dog a little bit to make it a little easier. And then cross your right ankle over your left knee, kind of like a figure four position. And then walk the fingertips back. This might be quite challenging, so embrace it. And then sit low into your figure four squat. So you can either sit right, sit, sit upright is option one. Or you can fold and bring fingertips down to the ground. What I actually like to do is kind of cradle the right leg, bringing the right foot in towards the left elbow crease. And then kind of continue to cradle as I squat low. My heart is reaching long, so I'm still active, even though I'm also tuning into just the stretch of the leg. So hips back, heart forward. And we're just sitting there. If you have a desire to take this into the flying pigeon arm balance, you certainly could. And then bring the hands down and mindfully release. And we'll switch sides. We can start in that kind of down dog position. Left ankle crosses over right knee. Keep the right knee bent as you crawl back and eventually sit into it. Your choice of where the arms slash hands may end up. Just try to keep a little bit of length in the spine no matter where you are, even if you're going for the flying pigeon. The flying pigeon is just the arm balance where both hands go down to the ground and you stay in this figure four position, but it's kind of like crow pose with a figure four position in the legs. And then you can extend uh, what in this case would be the right leg. Kind of like one-legged crow pose. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, drop a comment. <laughs> All right, go ahead and bring fingertips down, release the legs, shake it out, and then find a little bit of a deep fold. So either find ragdoll with the arms grabbing your elbows, or slide the palms underneath your feet, finding gorilla pose, parahastasana, hand to foot. Try to keep hips forward so hips are over the ankles rather than too far behind the ankles.
Let the head truly relax and hang. Release the palms one foot and then the other. Slowly drop the knees down to the mat in front of you. So first just squat down and then drop the knees down to the mat. As you get there, option here for a camel pose. Your camel pose could be a mellow camel pose. So you might just kind of place hands on hips and lean back, engage the glutes, and you might end up somewhere around there. If you want to go for the full camel pose, you can bring palms or hands to the heels. And then expand, press the hips forward. I'm not really able to cue very well once I'm in it. I prefer to focus on my breath, but you know the deal. We engage the glutes, press the hips forward, and then open from that kind of open position of the legs and hips. So go ahead and enter. Please release when you're ready to release. Sit back onto your heels or take a child's pose. This is a nice time. Anytime you find what feels like a very deep posture, especially a back bend, it's really nice to come back to something that feels quite normal, whether that's a seat or something else. I'm going to leave you a moment of silence here just to tune a little bit deeper into yourself, to calm your energy down. It's almost like we're kind of taking the waves into ripples, and then we're taking moments to let the ripples just turn into a completely calm surface of the water. So go ahead and take a few more breaths to yourself. We'll go ahead and meet in a position laying down on our backs. And as we do lay down on our backs, we'll bring knees into the chest and we'll move into either happy baby pose, which I'm demoing uh, right now on the screen, or you can roll it back into plow pose. And just make sure your plow pose Give space for your neck to be long. And a little bend in the knees. Give space for you to really fold into yourself. When you're ready, roll out of that pose and then simply drop legs over off the left side of your mat into a spinal twist. If you want, you can bump the hips a little bit to the right, give yourself a little bit more space to twist from. And then open the right arm out to the right. Take a few breaths here.
back through center. Shift the hips a little bit to the left and then twist legs off to the right. Simple reclined twist. Back through center. Bring the hips onto the middle of your mat. Feet go wide, knock the knees together into the center. Place the hands on the body or reach the arms overhead and grab opposite elbows. Lengthen your spine, lengthen the back of the neck. You could stay right there, or you could stretch the legs out. Move into a Shavasana. Adjusting arms and legs to come into a space that feels comfortable for you to be completely still in. Letting the body finally relax completely. Letting your concentration relax. Letting your breath relax. Letting all of the muscles in your face relax. Settling into a truer meaning of the word stillness. Letting the moment come to you and letting yourself be open to simply receive Let's take a few minutes together in this Shavasana.
Take a few deep breaths. As you do so, maybe you find natural movements and stretches, such as reaching the arms overhead. If you want to roll over to one side, you can do so. Let's gradually come to meet in a seated position on our mats. We'll go ahead and take a moment to imagine that we're together amongst the other people who practiced this class. Imagine that we are together kind of in person sitting in a, in a circle with each other. Because even though who knows how many views this video or get, will get and I don't know who will be watching this video. I know that this space will be shared um, with a certain number of us. And so kind of imagine us sitting in a circle. Maybe it's 10 of us, 20 of us, 30 of us, who knows. And we'll chant Om together. You're welcome to join your voice with mine or you're welcome to just listen and receive or you could even just do a little hum at a low note as well to provide your vibration into your own space. Let's go ahead and inhale. Take an open mouth, exhale, sigh it out. Ha. <sighs> and then inhale, we'll do three ohms. Bring palms to heart center into Anjali Mudra. Then lift thumbs up to the center of the forehead. Offer a bow forward to one another, to yourself, and towards the divine essence in all beings. This is where we close our practice. I can't thank you enough for joining me in this practice, whether this is your first time or your hundredth time here practicing with me and with us at Daily Sadhana. I hope you have a blessed rest of your day, and I truly hope to see you again very soon. Peace.